Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about my research and also thank uh, the Cancer Research Foundation for support of the research. I'm a leukemia and a stem cell transplant physician. My research has been focused on the prevention of relapse of leukemia and even other transplant. You know, right now we have a very good way to treat the leukemia. They can enter remission, but they will not stay in remission. Most times they have relapse and majority of time the patient will die from disease. So the current project we focus on the prevention of relapse of the stem cell transplant. So allogenic stem cell transplant is still the only curative treatment for many disease and especially for the acute leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia. And uh, even we made a huge uh, progress in the past uh, uh, one or two decades and the supportive care improvement and uh, the outcome is improving. But for the high risk patients, the outcome is still very poor and we have a very limited uh, treatment. And uh, the main problem for the uh, of the transplant is still like a relapse. And you can see the, the data from the uh, Center for International Bone Marrow uh, Transplant Research. Actually, you can see the half patient, like 40%. 7% of patients still die from the disease. Even they can go through the dramatic process of stem cell transplant, eventually the disease will come back and they will die from disease. So my focus of the research is want to prevent the relapse. They went through all the tough process and want to keep the disease in the remission. So in University of Chicago, we have used some uh, special condition regimen we call the T-cell depletion. So we try to get rid of T-cells because the T-cells can cause the uh, GVHD is very bad complications of stem cell transplant. It's a graft versus horse disease. And uh, we got a very good result. We have very low rate of GVHD and also comparable and uh, overall survival. And uh, so most time they sometimes they use a donor lymphocyte infusion to treat the uh, relapse disease after stem cell transplant. We have to give the high dose. And even they can put the relapse uh, back in remission, but it's very toxic. And uh, some kind of patient develop very bad GVHD, they die from the treatment for GVHD. So right now we try to think about the, to better give the patient uh, the DOI and the give early when patient has very minimal residual disease. At the same time, I think the donor lymphocyte infusion will have best efficacy. And also we want to give low dose instead of large amount of those uh, lymphocytes, because we know large amount of lymphocytes can cause a lot of disease. So we want to give a very small dose in the early phase. At the same time, a patient has very minimal residual, you have the best efficacy for the donor lymphocytes infusion. And also, uh, we give a very small dose, and we increase dose slowly. In that case, as the patient can tolerate very well, so we can minimize the toxicity, and we can get the best efficacy. So we try to uh, conduct the pilot uh, study and uh, try to include the uh, uh, high-risk patients because the treatment for the high-risk patients is very poor because and, uh, even they can go through the transplant, they have relapse and within D100 and after transplant, they die from disease. So we hypothesize that the prophylactic UI of the T-cell depletion actually can uh, accelerate like a donor driving the immune risk infusion and in that case, then they can decrease the relapse and also can prevent some infection complications. Eventually, they can eliminate the minimal visual disease and keep the patient in remission. So the primary objective is we try to see if this procedure is feasible or not, because in these high-risk patients, we want to make sure and at least more than half patients can go through the whole process to can get the early withdrawal immunosuppression and also can receive donor lymphocytes infusion and uh, to see if they can uh, control the disease. And uh, for the secondary objectives, we also want to detect the progression-free survival at the two years after the transplant. We can compare the historical data to see if this procedure can increase the outcomes. And uh, most importantly, and we want to do some uh, correlative studies and uh, try to understand the, the whole process. So we hope this and the procedure can provide the uh, platform for the future studies to in incorporate some uh, immunotherapies and also interest in immunotherapy and uh, to provide a, a hopefully a non-toxic treatment compared to traditional uh, chemotherapy.
to prevent the relapse. So I just want to give you some update of the study. So we plan to enroll 56 patients. Actually, actually we already put the 12 patients in the past couple of months since approval by RB in March 2003. Actually, we already put on 12 patients. And the white patient already died from a complication of a stem cell transplant. One patient had early GVHD, and the other patient also had GVHD with early immunosuppression. But just two patients, they have a high risk of disease, actually uh, tolerate the whole process and uh, receive the first dose DOI. So among the two patients, one patient actually is 29 year old gentleman with two young kids, actually. And he had a very refractory leukemia, so was treated in the other center, and they filled all the treatment, and they will not offer him transplant because uh, we are the center is very aggressive to treat like a refractory leukemia, but the other centers, they were told you go home and because of no treatment for you. That's why patient came to us, we put him on the study, and we put, right now, it's about the 100 days of the transplant, right now the disease in the remission, and he received the first dose and the donor lymphocyte infusion. Right now, he's doing well. So I think, uh, and we have all other patients still in the early phase of the transplantation. Actually, so the enrollment of the study is very fast. It's much faster than we thought. Actually, so uh, hopefully, and we can finish the whole trial, and then in uh, two years, two or three years, and we can we already collect the samples from each state. Then we will do the coordinative studies, and uh, we are cooperating with the data Nakamura. We will do a lot of well, like, uh, proteomic analysis, and uh, we will also check the minimum residual disease, and uh, we hope this approach can provide us on the platform to incorporate other immunotherapies. So I have other um, clinical trials I'm going to try to use the peptide and uh, to give the immunization to prevent the disease relapse, like a flu shot and every two weeks and monthly and try to prevent the relapse. So I hope we can get a very good result from this and at least give us an answer and to provide the platform for the future studies.